Having six kids in 15 years, I can tell you that I've learned a thing or two about what works and doesn't work for keeping toddlers, preschoolers, little kids in general, occupied for a good amount of time. So whether it's to stay quiet at church or long car trips or at home so you can homeschool some of the older kids, help them with something, uh, or just to buy you some time, right? To get ready for the day, enjoy your cup of coffee, whatever it may be. And also it's good for kids at those ages to learn how to entertain themselves as well for a little period of time each day. It's good for them too. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you my ride or die 10 proven methods throughout the years that have always worked for me 10 ways and they do not involve any screens to keep kids occupied so let's get started and hopefully this video is not too echoey for you i'm sorry if it is i just really miss filming in front of the yellow piano you might remember this from my other videos from the old house so i love it it's the first thing you see when you walk into this new house but it's a bigger room high ceilings it's kind of echoey i'm working on that all right number one on my list is wiki sticks these are sticks that are sticky and you can buy them by themselves or you can buy them in a kit that has all the alphabet letters it's like 12 dollars, but this is something that is educational but will also keep them entertained for a long time it's just cool to them how these little sticks stick to the cardboard without anything uh, without any glue it's messy free and yeah they can work on their letters uh, that way or they could just do other things with them my daughter likes to make little flowers out of them or bracelets but it definitely keeps them entertained for a good period of time so that is number one wiki sticks number two are brain teasers brain puzzles i'm talking about these that you can find on amazon there's all sorts of different levels from very easy to genius level if you can solve them and so um, how we got started with these are uh, one of our friends gave us one to borrow it was like a really difficult one was it one or two anyhow my husband was the only one that could do it that was actually able to take it apart none of us ever could so i started buying some of these other little ones for the kids and it's just like this and then you have to take it apart actually did uh, take this one apart and but then you have to put it back together which is also tricky so believe it or not this is fun and will keep kids busy entertained trying to take it apart and then once they take it apart they have to put it back together and not just toddlers preschoolers little kids I mean my teens tweens like I said adults we love to sit there and just work on these as well. I bought this in a set of three that was pretty affordable, but there's all kinds out there. I mean, this is like a whole world thing on Amazon. You'll go down the rabbit hole of all kinds of little brain teaser puzzles, but they do keep you entertained for quite a while. Number three are busy bags. If you haven't heard of this concept before, they're just little uh, Ziploc bags that have one little game, one instruction, one thing to do on the inside. There's all different kinds of busy bags you can look them up on pinterest you can look them up on the internet but here's what i recommend how to do this i've done this a couple of times in the past and it always works out great because you know you don't want to do 10 busy bags and buy the crafts the little things for all 10 and could it, it could be a lot and then you have all this extras and leftover so instead get together you know a group of 10 nine of your friends and assign one to each friend one type of busy bag and that friend will create 10 of those types of busy bags so they're only buying those supplies for that little exerciser or game for 10 and then you have a swap party where everybody can come hang out and swap or we, one time we did this at a coffee shop it was really fun and then one time i hosted at my house and just swap the busy bags right then you go home that night with 10 different busy bags of activities it's a lot of fun it's a great activity so number three is busy bags number four this is probably the most priciest out of all of these definitely a great like christmas present or birthday gift is magnet tiles these are a lot of fun they're magnets they stick together you can it's kind of like lego something that you can use always over and over and be creative with my uh my kids like to make hamster mazes out of them it's a quiet activity something that can keep them occupied and they can do it by themselves or with maybe another younger sibling that's a great kind of uh, group activity as well 
is magnetiles. Number five, this is one of the very, very few things I can probably count on one hand that we brought from Georgia that has survived a cross country move and multiple houses here in Arizona. The one thing that has made it through all those moves are these Bible felt pieces. So this is something that my little girls played with. I have great memories with that. Uh, so yeah, they're just, they, we have different landscapes. That's always fun. And just a random assortment of Bible felt pieces. Some of them are from the uh, beginner's Bible and some of them are from a church. Like you can buy them now online, you know, but back in the day, um, I got them through a friend of a friend who uh, they were re uh, redoing the church nursery or whatever, and they were giving them away. Um, it was a huge set. I think you can buy it like that on Amazon today. Just a huge set of all kinds of pieces. I'm sure over the years it's dwindled down to just, you know, now we have two Ikea trays, but I'm telling you that is enough to keep them occupied for hours. They will keep playing with them again and again. So Bible felt pieces. And yeah, this is something that they can bring in the car or to a doctor's office or, you know, it's a little bit more portable. So I would say yes, number six, Bible felt pieces. Number seven are tanagram puzzles. I think that's what they're called. Um, you can buy the big ones with the little pattern things that have different shapes for them to do. But I also really like and recommend the travel tanagrams that have magnets on them and it's a board and the um, instructions are just built into the book. So there's not a lot of moving pieces. It's all in one, it's contained. This is great for church, great for car rides, uh, just great quiet activity and it's something that they can just use again and again there's lots of different puzzles it's a lot of fun very affordable so that is my next pick is the tanagrams in general but especially the travel ones all right and to go along with that number seven are the geo boards so these are the boards that you use the rubber bands with same concept something that they can do over and over again and again different shapes it's pretty portable it's just a board and nails and rubber bands but if you want to just buy it all done on amazon it's one of those affordable activities great for them to do during the school time too and it's actually very, very helpful when it comes to math and things like that so that's number seven is geo boards number eight now i can't really think of what the name is of this thing but I'll, I'll just link a picture of it and uh, maybe some video footage of my daughter using it, but it will keep her busy for a good chunk of the homeschool morning. Uh, it has different words and the little blocks and they just, you know, have to match the blocks to the card, whatever the word is. There's also a little bit of math involved. It's a little different and I think better than a lot of the kind of educational games where they're putting puzzles together that spell a word because they're actually using their hands to spell each individual letter. Uh, there's a lot of different cards. It's going to help them with spelling right later on. It's, it's a really great activity for them. It really keeps them busy throughout the school day. So that's number eight. I can't even think of what the name of it is right now, but just this kind of educational game. Number nine, this is an activity again during school time or doctor's appointments in the car. And that is the copy books that work with the special pen where it only works on the copy book and it erases in like 15 minutes. I love these because there's no mess. A lot of those, uh, dry erase ones, they can get really gross after a while, but this, this looks really nice. It holds up really well. I like the, uh, not the Sank Magic ones, and I did a video on that one, that the, the books are really small, but the other ones that I did recently, the Soul Day ones I think are better, they're bigger, and they have also drawing, you know, so they don't just have to do the ABCs and the uh, numbers. Yes, those are great, great first school activity as well. Uh, but the drawing one is just a lot of fun too. So I would recommend the Soul Day copy books for number nine. And last but not least, number 10 is an activity. And this is an activity that I have used a lot over the last year. It's something that I uh, recommend in my RC course for littles, and it will buy you such a nice little chunk of time during the school day. And that is making them put the ABCs in alphabetical order. So I just have a little white, 
uh, board and the ABC letter magnetic tiles, you give them the ABCs and then they have to put them in order. So this is great because obviously they're, it's improving their alphabet fluency, they're, they're learning the alphabet, they're learning the letters, uh, but it will just keep them busy for a long time as they're thinking about, okay, A, they're finding A, putting it, what comes after A, B. So I have found out of all the little academic things, this one really, I'll forget, <laughs> like, oh, you're still doing that? It, it really keeps them quiet and entertained for a good chunk of the school day. And make an incentive out of it. So I, I told my five-year-old, when you can do this, put the whole ABCs in alphabetical order with no mistakes the first time, you'll get a big prize. So that was something she was really excited about and motivated for. And then later on, you can do it maybe like once a week, once every couple weeks, just to, you know, keep it going, make sure they're still uh, have that alphabet fluency as they're maybe doing alpha phonics or whatever kind of phonics program you're doing. So that's something that I would recommend. It works. Number 10 to keep them busy for a long period of time is put the ABC magnet tiles in order. All right, so those are my top 10 tips. <laughs> it's hard to say. All right, so those are my top 10 tips on how to keep little kids entertained, occupied, um, if you need to buy yourself some time. Of course, there are a lot of other ideas and suggestions out there. I would love to hear what has worked for you in the comments down below. Again, I'll leave links for these things. And if you wanna find out more about my course, RC Course for Littles, that takes you step-by-step step through the entire process from the very beginning, learning their alphabet, learning their letters, all the way to where the Robinson curriculum officially picks up, then this program is for you. I will leave information down below. Hope to see you there and I will see you in the next video. Bye.